9 Crazy Religions You've Probably Never Heard Of Today we're going to learn about 9 crazy religions you've probably never heard of. I get that religion is a pretty fucked up topic, but come on, how weird can they possibly be? Trust me, some of this stuff is really out there if you know what I mean. So sit back and get ready to be... <clears throat> Mystified. Number 9. Thelema, founded in 1904 by Aleister Crowley, is perhaps one of the, if not only, newer religions with a large number of adherents that personifies the ancient Egyptian gods into a belief system. Thelemites divide history into eons, which describe that particular time period's dominant concept using the ancient Egyptian gods and goddesses. For example, we are currently in the Aeon of Horus, symbolizing the age of the sovereign individual, and backtracks to the Aeon of Osiris, symbolizing the age of the paternal principle of self-sacrifice and submission, and the Aeon of Isis, the age of the maternal principle for the devotion of Mother Earth. Cool. In that case, I can't wait for the Aeon of Babi. Who's Babby? The Egyptian god of baboons. <laughs> Thelema's followers also call their numerous practices, like their initiatory ritual, magic with a K, and anything that limits their actions as black magic. Thelema has a single main religious text called the Book of Law, which according to Thelemites was dictated to Crowley in Egypt by Praetor Human or Beyond Human Intelligence. Whoa! I just looked up a picture of this Crowley guy. Look at the way he just stares right through you. He was definitely beyond something, if you know what I mean. I'm gonna pretend I don't know what you mean. Number 8. Millerism. As the name might suggest, its founder was William Miller. The main principle of Millerism was the second coming, or advent, of Jesus Christ. By the 1830s, Miller began spreading his revelation publicly to the Christians nationwide. He proclaimed that Christ's second coming would take place sometime in April of 1843. When that day came and went, Miller reappointed the date to October 23rd, 1844, emphasizing that this was the true date. Thousands of people, despite Miller's first mistake, sat on rooftops, wore white ascension robes, and some even sold their belongings, ready to meet with their saviour and go to heaven. Days went by, and even the most faithful of the Millerites finally succumbed to Miller's failure. Jeez, can you imagine the flaming he'd get on social media if that happened nowadays? You'd think so, right? But here's the strangest part of Millerism. Despite having disappointed, and lost, many of its adherents, splinter groups of Millerism that had formed to protect Miller's inaccurate dates hold a very firm place in parts of the United States. For example, the Seventh-day Adventists, which is approximately 15 million strong, the ever-present Jehovah Witnesses, and the Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. Like Millerism, the Adventists of today still believe in Christ's second coming, but unlike Millerism, neither group has a particular date set for it. That's probably a much smarter way of going about it. No broken promises, at least. Number 7. Heaven's Gate is another Bible-driven sect that will make you far more weirded out than our previous one. To put it in a nutshell, Heaven's Gate believes in biblical eschatology, the study of mankind's destiny, and UFOs. Weird enough? Eh, I don't know, but I do like where this is headed. Well, let's break it down. Heaven's Gate was founded in 1976 by Marshall Applewhite and Bonnie Nettles, friends who claimed to have known each other in a past life because of how close their relationship became in a very short time. Their core belief was that planet Earth would be recycled, wiped clean to start over again. Survival of this cycle was to leave Earth at once, namely through suicide. They believed that by doing so, they would reach the next level and continue life as extraterrestrials. Your only chance to survive or evacuate is to leave with us. They even went as far as to believe that aliens had come to Earth millions of years ago and planted the seeds of civilization, a concept that has been widely accepted in further times. There's a little bit more to the group, like Applewhite's reference to himself as a Texan reincarnation of Jesus among other biblical beliefs. But on March 26th, 1997, all 39 members of Heaven's Gate were found by police having committed mass suicide. A dramatic finale! if you will. Come on, man, don't make light of it. They were real people. And now they're real extraterrestrials. And one of them is a real extraterrestrial Texan Jesus. Yeah, fair point. Number six. Sources vary, but generally speaking, Agori was founded sometime between the 14th and 18th centuries and is still prominent in modern day areas of India and Cambodia. Agori is a branch of Hinduism and is best known for their post-mortem rituals. 
Their practices are known to be extreme, and because some of their beliefs are contradictory to traditional Hinduism, the Aghoris are generally not well received by other Hindus. This ought to be good. What did they do to annoy them? As mentioned previously, the Aghoris have, you could say, a strange ascetic towards the dead. Most often they are seen in rituals covered in bone dust, living by or at crematoriums, and their gurus smoking cannabis. The Aghoris believe their founders to be the physical incarnation of Hinduism's three most worshipped gods, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. It was said that Dattatreya even offered his own flesh to his disciple as a way of bestowing Aghori power and establishing their student-teacher relationship. Among others, they believe all humans are born as natural-born Aghori, perform Shava Sadhana, the worshipping of a corpse, use skulls as bowls, and unlike most Hindus, they eat meat, in some cases even human meat. Jeez, are you sure it's just cannabis they're smoking? In fairness, worshipping the dead is hardly unique to the Aghori. They just go about it in their own special way. Number 5. While this religion was also founded in India, the weapon worshippers in the state of Tamil Nadu don't have any particular relation to Hinduism. Wait, the fuck did you say? Weapon worshippers. Yep, you heard right. In the Tirupur city of this region, the people have been generating weapons for about 300 years. An act, they say, that started with the original inhabitants who migrated there and wished to remain in good conditions. Their temples are lined with swords, spears, bows, and arrows. Today, the adherents of this religion continue to worship these weapons for the sake of safety and prosperity of their village. Honestly, that sounds pretty cool. Number 4. The Prince Philip Movement In a small island 10,000 miles away from the Buckingham Palace are a group of devoted Vanuatu citizens who believe in the 93-year-old husband of Queen Elizabeth II. What exactly do they believe in? It all began in 1974, when a warrior by the name of Chief Jack Naver witnessed Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip visit the outlying Australian island. After seeing Prince Philip, he was convinced that Prince Philip was the true messiah. Chief Jack and his followers also believe that Prince Philip is the descendant of Tana spiritual ancestors. So, how did the British monarch take this? Pretty well, actually. In 1980, he sent an autographed portrait of himself and has exchanged other gifts with them. After all, who wouldn't want a real-life fan club of their own? Maybe I should pay these guys a visit. Number 3. Dinkoism. Sounds weird already, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's about to get weirder. Created in 2008, Dinkoism is a parody religion made by atheists to poke fun at all the excesses of organized religion. According to Dinkoists, who are primarily Indian, a cartoon mouse called Lord Dinkin created the universe millions of years ago. Um, what? That's right, a cartoon mouse. Despite what the atheists had in mind, not all these devotees think it's a laughing matter. Dinkoism has gained in followers and even has a holy book called the Dinkin Purana. Some even believe Dinkin to actually exist and worship him, claiming that Dinkoism is the image of peace and is the most logical religion to have existed. So atheists, I guess you just added to the religion count. Not decreased it. Reminds me of the data art movement you were telling me about a while back. It's a callback! <laughs> Number two. Happy Science. What's so strange about them? 12 million strong, the adherents of Happy Science worship a single deity called El Cantare, who is said to be the true name of the Heavenly Father in the Old Testament, and also of Elohim, the Middle Eastern god of creation. Ryu Ho Akawa established Happy Science in 1986, claiming he could channel the spirits of well-known religious figures like Jesus, Buddha, Moses, and Confucius. He even claimed that he could communicate with the guardian spirits of political leaders. Akawa believes himself to be the incarnation of El Cantare, and in 1991 said in a speech to 40,000 people that it is I who possesses the highest authority on earth. It is I who has all authority from the beginning of the earth until the end. For I am not human, but the law itself. People call me arrogant. Stranger than that are the women he married. The first was Kyoko Okawa, the self-proclaimed reincarnation of Aphrodite. After their divorce and Kyoko's expulsion from happy science, Okawa married Shio Okawa, who is believed to be the reincarnation of Gaia. Because if you're going to be the physical god of the world, it's only reasonable to have a mighty fine goddess wife. Personally, I would have picked Aphrodite over Gaia, but hey, to each their own. <laughs> Not that you could get with either of them. Fuck you. Number one. Raelism is the strangest religion you've probably never heard of. Founded in 1973 by a former French race car driver and pop star, Claude Vorillon claims to have witnessed a UFO landing in the Auvergne region of France. 
He writes in his book, The Book That Tells the Truth, that an extraterrestrial being who he spoke to was a little over four feet tall, had long black hair, almond-shaped eyes, and olive skin. I like the name of the book. Really gets right to the point. The little creature calls itself Yahweh and belonged to a race called the Elohim. The alien further explains to him that the Elohim created mankind through genetic engineering and had been watching and guiding humanity through prophets that included Buddha, Moses, Muhammad, and Jesus, who were human Elohim hybrids. Vorilon, who renamed himself as Ra'al, claimed that this being chose him as their next messenger now that humanity had reached a higher level of scientific knowledge. As crazy as it sounds, Ra'alism has a fellowship of 70,000 members in 97 countries, South Korea and Japan being the more notable of them. What a coincidence that Vorlahan happened to find a religion where he is put alongside Buddha and Jesus. I'm sure it has nothing to do with an overinflated ego. No, no, that would be ridiculous. So, anyway, there you have it. Nine crazy religions. But if any of you guys at home have suggestions, then comment down below. Uh, Crash? What are you doing? Shit, what? Nothing! Follow Culture Crash on social media! If you would like to support the show, then head on over to the Culture Crash Patreon page where you can receive rewards for your support. Every bit counts.